this trial basically built on the already existing data of PD-1 inhibitors in patients with recurrent metastatic disease. And since the uh, approval of these PD-1 inhibitors, the question has been, what is a good partner with these inhibitors? And so um, cabozantinib was chosen because of its properties. It's a VEGF inhibitor. It, um, and VEGF inhibition does lead to immune modulation that uh, because of this VEGF inhibitors are good partners with, uh, with immunomodulatory treatments. Uh, however, cabozantinib is also uh, modulates the immune system through different mechanisms. Uh, it's an inhibitor, an inhibitor of the axle um, and the TAM family of receptors. Um, and uh, by changing, by inhibiting these and by inhibiting MET as well, it does affect uh, the immune microenvironment. Uh, and so uh, because of all these reasons, it makes sense to combine it with an immune checkpoint inhibitor. There's also accumulating data in other diseases that this combination is a winning strategy, especially in renal cell carcinoma. So the trial basically is a phase two single arm multi-institution trial of single agent pembrolizumab at, four, at uh, 200 milligrams every three weeks with cabozantinib uh, at 40 milligrams daily. We allowed those reduction of cabozantinib to 20 milligrams for patients who have grade three or higher toxicities. And our primary endpoint on the trial was looking at improvement of the response rate, which traditionally with single agent pembrolizumab has been hovering around 18%. And so um, uh, the trial accrued starting March of 2019. There were 50 patients enrolled on the study. Uh, 50 patients, I, I should say, screened for the study. 36 patients enrolled and received a treatment, and 33 patients were evaluable for response. And at the time of the last analysis, 18 out of these 33 patients, or 54% of these patients, had an objective partial response, um, which is a departure from the data that uh, we know with uh, PD-1 inhibitors. More importantly, I think uh, the treatment overall was well tolerated, despite the fact that uh, a significant number of patients, up to 17, needed dose reduction of cabozantinib. These dose reductions really uh, abrogated the toxicities that we observed on the treatment. And those toxicities were what you would expect with single agent pembrolizumab or single agent cabozantinib. In other words, there were no um, unusual toxicities uh, resulting uh, from the combination. There were some increased liver function tests which you would expect from both agents. Um, and so, uh, What's interesting as well is the uh, progression-free survival data, which uh, compared to single-agent immunotherapy um, does seem to be fairly promising with a one-year PFS of 54% um, and an overall survival at one year of close to 65%. So those also, this information is also a departure from what we see from single-agent immunotherapy, even for the patients who stand to benefit the most from single-agent pembrolizumab namely patients with CPS score more than 20. When we looked at correlatives with overall survival, it seemed that ECOG performance status correlated with overall survival. There was a trend favoring CPS high score, however, did not reach statistical significance. And we're looking at other biomarkers, but we're very excited with the data and um, hopefully this will um, lead to additional efforts uh, leading to changing paradigms in the treatment of recurrent metastatic disease.